Hello everyone, this is HTS Guest Gearbox some more StarCraft 2 Heart of the Swarm 1v1 action. This time is going to be between barcodes, barcode. No, just kidding. Once again, I'm sorry. That joke is so bad and yet so good. It is going to be QXC down to the bottom right side. And his opponent is going to be the Korean player, Kaiser. Now, I actually did cast a Kaiser game on my channel not too long ago. I think it was back in February. If I remember correctly, he was going up against a Muslim, although I do have a very, very bad memory, let's be honest. So uh, that might be actually incorrect. But you know what? I saw two names I recognized from a previous cast, and I was like, I'm going to go ahead and cast this right now. Now, if you're wondering why Kaiser is so supply blocked, all he did was the evolution... Uh, why do I always call these evolution chambers? I should just officially, instead of calling them assimilators, just call them evolution chambers. Not extractors, not refineries, not assimilators. They're all just evolution chambers. And then I will call the evolution chamber... And I'll still call it an evolution chamber, just because that's how my brain works. Anyways, you build one of those while waiting for your overlord to finish. You cancel it, build a drone. Oh, wait, wait, I did that order wrong. You build it. Right here, it takes one supply away. You build a drone, which puts you at max. Then you cancel it, and then you have one extra supply in workers. This is a neat little trick you can do. Uh, it doesn't really give you that big of an advantage. The only time you'll really see that come into play is if they build something like 20 spine crawlers in the late game, make a bunch of brood lords, and then cancel all the spines. Sometimes you'll see that. But then also, sometimes just having those spine crawlers anyway is very useful. So very, very rarely will you see that come into play. Basically, what you could do theoretically is uh, is as many buildings as you could make in the time it takes for the first building to finish is how much of an extra supply you could get so I, I, th I feel like theoretically you could build like 30 hatcheries or something and then be way over the top in supply but uh, you almost never see that it's definitely not imbalanced or anything like that because it's such a a, a rare thing to see have happen now QXC actually gonna be playing it as greedy as it gets as far as Terran is concerned he is gonna be going for a barracks after command center and after his refinery so that is literally as greedy as you can get that tells me he's either going to be going for drop some sort of tech because he wants to get out that gas right away um i didn't realize that there's a clear selection button right there so if you click here do you guys notice that if you are selecting something you can click that off i don't know that's one of those things where it's like how did i not see that until just now but regardless spawning pool going to be on the way here for kaiser and uh yeah we're just going to kind of see exactly what happens now the reason i want to cast this is because watching QXC is so fun. His multitasking is great. He's a very, very good player. Um, we've seen him dominate a lot of Zerg players out there. And uh, you know what? Watching foreigners go up against Koreans, I have to admit, is one of my favorite things to do. Um, or definitely one of my favorite types of matches to watch. Because if you have two foreigners, you're always thinking, well, you know, what would have happened if a Korean was here? When you watch two Koreans, it's just kind of like, well, these guys are really so abnormally good that I could never, ever even think of doing that. And then if you watch a Korean play a foreigner, I, I think it's the perfect balance of, uh, of watching two different play styles, two different practice styles, kind of duke it out. And uh, we do have a factory on the way here for QXC. He's got the reactor going to be coming up which uh, will most likely be for Hellions or Widow Mines, but uh, normally it's going to be Hellions versus Zerg. Not always, as Widow Mines can... Uh, you know, Widow Mines are interesting versus Zerg. They're very, very good in the mid and late games. In the early game, though, you can actually just end up outright losing if you are too reliant on Widow Mines, because one Zergling will activate one Widow Mine. So if you have five Widow Mines, just run in five Zerglings, uh, activate all of them, and then send in the rest of your army. And that's something that we have seen happen in the past where players are a little bit too reliant on Widow Mines, but uh, I, I don't think that he's going to be too reliant on them right here, as he does have the one Marine going to be guarding the entrance, and he is going to be going for two Hellions. Now, the two Hellions is kind of interesting, because it's one of those things where it's good versus Roaches. Or, excuse me, I already messed that up. It's good versus Zerglings, it's good for map control, and it's good for potential harass. Now, the reason my brain was saying Roaches is because you have to remember that it's actually bad versus Roaches. So, it's kind of a safe-ish unit to go, and he's taking a little bit of a gamble here, hoping that his opponent does not Roach Rush, because this map is so extremely large. And uh, right here, the Zergling right there, it's the Zergling that could not kill the command center there as he did attempt to do that. Uh, remember, kids, the little engine that could does not always stand true if you're a Zergling. So just remember that as uh, we do see the Overlord's going to be moving out right now, scouting the center of the map. And you have to remember that this map is a very large map. So I think that QXC taking a gamble that there's not going to be that many roaches this early was a good one, instead relying on the... Uh, I mean, his thought process makes sense. He's relying on the fast units that are good versus the Zerg's fast units, which are going to give him map control and help deny any of the map control for Zerg with those Zerglings. 
Uh, Marine Mike at this Overlord here. Don't know, though. No, I think that is actually going to escape as the Hellions are going to be moving out, trying to spot if there's going to be a third base, which there is, and he will spot it. So there it is right there. He knows about it. He knows the exact timing. Roasts it away a little bit, which alerts the Zerg player to, hey, you should probably send some Zerg things down here. I feel like the new skins that Blizzard released actually... Oh, wait, did he kill it? No, kids, okay, it's right there. Um, the new skins they released, doesn't it just make it feel like those units are better? Don't you feel like you can do more damage with Marines that have spikes on their guns? Or Zerglings that have giant wings? Or Zealots who are wearing, like, leather, it looks like? It's so awesome. Those look like QXC here, though, is not going to be taking too much damage from the Harass at, by any means. I mean, that's not really that many Zerglings. They just look so silly with those big wings. I like, can't get over it. I expect them to be able just to fly through the air or something. Kind of curious to see if they tone those down or not. But either way, the Hellions aren't going to be chasing this round. They do actually manage to intercept them, which is very difficult to do versus Zerg. Um, just because Lings are so fast, they, they will slip away easily. But not today, says QXC, as he does lock that down. Now, QXC, has he worked on a third base yet? No, it looked like he very well may be going for a two-base timing here with the Hellbat, Hellion. Um, I think he had Siege Tanks mixed in there, so definitely going to be tearing it up with Mech. He's also heavily protected here. The Overlord, though, <laughs> is going to be spotting the fact that there is uh, a Siege Tank there. Can't see the Widow Mines, though, as it doesn't have detection. Now, one thing about Widow Mines to remember, hang out, we do have an attack up here. Lots of drones going down, but hey, lots of Hellions going down as well. Good focus firing by Kaiser. He was focusing down the weakened one, so a nice play there. I don't think that actually worked out that great for QXC. I mean, yes, he did do quite a bit of damage. Seven workers is a lot, but uh, he also is going to be giving up a lot of that map control. Keep in mind, there's overlords everywhere. Look at look at the uh, the mini map. How he has the overlords placed. That's actually really cool. Over the little high points over there. Um, I kind of forgot what I was saying before before all of that. It was going to be a really good point, but now I forget. It's gone. It's gone forever, which is just fine. We do have the four Hellions out. Um, Pretty damaged, though, and I know I say this a lot, but it still stands true. Four Hellions equals one command center. So if you don't take a third base here uh, as... Oh, he is actually going to be going for a third base. I thought he might be going for a base timing, like as far as when he's going to attack. But uh, I think he realized, you know what, my units are moving so slow. I lost a lot of Hellions. I don't think there's a whole lot I can do. So I'm going to go back into the harassment phase of the game, which you do have a drop over here on the right side. I'm going to be moving in with a Hellbat and two Widow Mines. Oh my god, these drops are actually crazy to deal with. We'll see if that Widow Mine gets any kills or not. Uh, yes it does. That, those weren't big hits though. Um, we do have more Hellions trying to slip on over here. Also drop inside the main base going to be taking place. I got to say that Kaiser is doing a phenomenal job at dealing with this. Cleaning out those Widow Mines easily enough as the Overseer is now done. We'll take a look at the overall damage in just a second. But honestly, it, it's one of those things where you're watching it as a spectator. And a lot of times in games you're like, oh, I could have done better than that. And I could not. I can say with 100% certainty that I could not have done better than that as Kaiser was able to hold off. Now, the, the harassment is still continuing over here. Looks like the Hellbat has managed to kill off a couple of the uh, larva there. A lot of the larva, which is actually really, really cool. That's one thing that they're very good at is killing larva, which is something that we don't see players utilize very often just because it tends not to be a very good move to make. But I think in that case, it actually ended up working out. Overlord's got to go down. So QXC, I mean, he's definitely planned this game out. He's doing multi-prong harass with the Hellions. Then he went into multi-prong drops. And now he's transitioned into killing off the Overlords with Vikings. So just doing everything he can to keep the man down. Let's take a look at the units lost here. You can see QXC being pretty cost-effective. There is a fourth base on the way. And uh, all the Overlords still is getting out. I'm pretty sure they're just all put on hold position there as they have just given up running away. This one, though, deciding not to be on hold position. And uh, was that Overlord Speed? Yes, he does have Overlord Speed. Also, Ventral Sax is now done. So he's going to be able to do drops if he wants to, which Roach Drops can actually be really, really effective versus what he's going against if the army is out of position, which it will be, at least for right now. Lots of Overlords moving on down here. So all of a sudden, we are seeing a very aggressive base game out of both these players. Got to be doing a four Overlord drop. Now, this is almost a Doom drop. But we'll see how QXC manages to hold this off. Oh, God. The medevac, I think, actually spotted that. Yes, it did. Oh, he's going to actually be able to get back into position here. Look at this. Every second that uh, he spots this early is going to be a huge benefit to him. Actually dropping a couple over here wouldn't be a bad idea. But here comes the drop inside the main base. Is there going to be enough here to deal with it? Looks like the tank spawning just in time. Will be able to siege these up if he wants to. But the Hellbats not really going to stand a chance here versus the Roaches, although Hellbats still do a lot of damage. The siege tanks need to join in the fight. There we go. Only one Roach goes down. A nice play here. Another multi-prong drop, though. Just non-stop attacks here 
from both players now. The Hellbat drops are just terrifying. And remember when Hellbats first came out, players were like, well, why would you ever drop Hellbats and not Hellions? Especially now that you can only drop two. You got to remember, though, if you get one or two good shots, all the drones are dead. Roach is over here actually able to take out the expansion, though. Will force the lift off. I believe these siege tanks completely vulnerable. I think the Roach is going to be able to clean this up here. He should really commit to that attack, I feel like, and clean those out. He's not going to get a better opportunity. I think he thought that there were more in uh, back there. But for now, he's going to go ahead and defend it. Drop going to be going down in the main base. Does kill an Overlord with Roaches inside. But multi-prong attacks for both players. I know that's kind of the, uh, the word of the day is multi-prong. But uh, we'll just pretend that this is Sesame Street. We're learning about multi-prong attacks today. And that's exactly what's going to be happening so far throughout this game as we do see both players continuing to be aggressive. I love the usage of, uh, of the Roaches here. I feel like he needs to keep that up, though. Really find ways to lock down these expansions. Looks like the Roaches in the main base will eventually get taken out. They're trying to kill off the Siege Tank. They do manage to get it. It looks like the Hellbats, though, with the two attack, one armor, are going to have a slight upgrade advantage over the 1-1 one, one Roaches. The uh, Command Center over here is forced to be lifted off. And now QXC is on the defensive side of things, trying to find a way to deal with this. Hellbats have so much HP, though, 135 with the plus one armor, making them survive a surprisingly long amount of time versus the Roaches. Here comes the attack over here, though. The uh, Supply Depots will get taken out. I'm not sure he's going to be able to do much damage to the economy right now, but actually the more Supply Depots he can kill, the better. That will Supply Block QXC. And you got to remember that QXC, during the midst of this, is not going to have time to build more Supply Depots. So the more Depots Kaiser can kill, the absolute better. We do have four Supply Depots on the way here, though, for QXC. But you just got to remember, he is Supply Blocked for now. Siege Tanks on the high ground going to be just enough to hold this off for now. The one Roach over here is like, hey, guys, we should... Uh, uh, probably kill off these depots. What do you think? You gotta try and go for the command center here. He realizes, you know what, it's not worth overcommitting right now. And I don't know if these roaches over here are gonna be able to do all that much. The two sea tanks over here trying to hold the line. Oh, look at that! Swinging in with huge amounts of roaches to be able to kill off all these tanks. Now these SCVs are completely vulnerable. I don't know if any of them are going to survive right now unless QXC can get units over here in time to deal with it. Keep in mind that there is a blinking light down the bottom left side. These roaches should definitely stay for now, though. They can kill off these tanks as well if they decide to. Now, the Hellbats are surprisingly effective here. You can see a lot of roaches melting away, but still enough to one-shot siege tanks, albeit barely. The roach over here trying to take this down before it upgrades to a planetary fortress. The roaches, though, just doing so much. I can't believe QXC actually dropped mules over here as QXC is in a lot of trouble right now. 162 supply to 113. Non-stop aggression for both these players. Looks like these Hellbats will be enough to push this out. Remember, the medevacs can heal them which is the only reason I'm saying that they have a chance here to do massive damage. Yep, they do buy enough time for the tanks to come in here, and this will be cleaned out. Now, Kaiser needs to make sure to keep macroing here. He's got a lot of money in the bank. He has potential for more upgrades, which is exactly what he's doing. He's got the 2-2 on the way, and still a lot of money here to be spent. Roach is doing a little bit of final damage there to uh, to the SCV line, and that, that lasted for quite some time. And the planetary over here will all but assuredly be taken out. Planetaries are not cheap whatsoever. You can see that QXC is definitely starting to fall behind here in this game. He is still on three bases, though. He's still got the mech. These tanks right here deciding not to siege, which could actually be the correct choice as these roaches will eventually get cleaned up. However, they are going to be able to kill off several tanks there before finally retreating. You do have to remember, though, that QXC does have the two attack, one armor, uh, and has had that upgrade advantage for quite some time. That SCV trying to be a hero. I still don't know if pure roach is the way to go here for uh, for Kaiser. I think the effectiveness is, uh, of roaches is going to start diminishing. And what he really needs to do... Oh, the medevac is going to go down! Wow, he got so lucky there. Not so lucky over here at his natural. These drones are just a one shot away from dying. Oh, God, those drones have got to be so careful. Honestly, what Kaiser needs to do, and he might lose the game if he... Oh! Both those overlords are going to get taken out. Don't think he's going to unload a single roach. No, he doesn't. That was two overlords and eight roaches, which is actually going to even this up in a big, big way. But honestly, what Kaiser needs to do is start throwing down spines and spores, which is something that a lot of Zerg players haven't really had to do uh, versus mech in the past. Because really, drops weren't that common if your opponent was going mech in the past. But now you have to do it because the, uh, the Hellbat drops are just insane. The Widowmine drops can even be worse. So spine cars, I'm calling it now. If Kaiser has any trouble with drops coming up, it, it would have been resolved easily by spines, at least at a couple of the bases. And that's exactly what I'm talking about right here. A big pile of dead drones right now. Two kills and uh, six kills on this Hellbat. They will eventually get cleaned up by those roaches, but uh, still... Telling you, man, lots of spines is the way to go. Lots of command centers is apparently also the way to go. Three command centers on the way. We also have a sensor tower coming up, and sensor towers are great. This is the one building that I think all Terran players forget exists, even though they're one of the most useful buildings in the game. A lot of times they just kind of get forgotten about. Here's the Hellbat drop right there. Now, Hellbats are not fast enough to chase the drones directly. 
but inside of a medevac, you can chase down anything. So it looks like that drop right there is going to get held off. I'm telling you, man, Kaiser's taking a big risk here, not having spines for def uh, defense as these widow mines um, or, or hellbats, excuse me, could prove to be very effective. Now the Roach army has maxed out the supply. Oh, he's going to get a lot of hellbat kills right here, which is exactly what he needs to make those tanks vulnerable. But hellbat. A uh, siege tank, which is such an interesting choice. I was going to say he should probably go for some air, which is exactly what he's going to be transitioning into right now with the Spire. Of course, the Widow Mines can end a Mutalist today in no time flat. I'm not sure why he's stopping here to kill these rocks. He should probably just go ahead and get out of there. But uh, the Central Tower is now done. That's going to prevent any sort of air harassment or air drops from coming on in. The Spire going to be nearly done. And uh, at this point, Kaiser, if he wants to go for Mutalisks. That's not a bad choice because there's no anti-air on the field aside from the Widow Mines. If he wants to go for the Mutalisks, that is fine. Or Broodlord would be great as well. And he is, has started his Hive Tech. But if he does that, he needs to make sure to sacrifice some of these Roaches. He is too maxed out to be sitting back on this tech option without utilizing it before QXC moves in. So this is the stage of the game where it is right on the borderline of being able to sacrifice a lot of Roaches, especially if you're doing it with counterattacks and things like that. He will be able to kill these Widow Mines if he wants. No, decides to go for the natural right now. There's also going to be an attack here on the fifth base, which he might actually get this here if he focuses it down, which is exactly what he's going to try and do. We'll keep an eye on that little square right there, see if it does fall. The Roaches, though, are going to be going inside the main base. Oh, God, the planetary does still remain. Nope, he canceled it and lifted it off. That would explain it. Now, at this point, if he delays production or supply blocks or does something useful with these Roaches, it'll be worth it because he's just freeing up supply for, well, well apparently more Roaches here. But I think he should be going for air units right now as uh, these Roaches are sacrificial. Could try and go for some more depots or just try and pick off units here and there. If he can kill the siege tanks, that's nice. Ten mutas on the way. He's going to be able to crush this army in the midfield. Should to come down to it. Oh god, a bad rally as that army was there and ready and waiting to destroy that. 20 mutas are on the way though, but I gotta say, if Kaiser doesn't actually make something happen here with these mutas, he may have sacrificed a few too many units because you can see he is not maxed out. He doesn't have enough gas to get maxed out and now he's forced to transition into Zerglings, which is not what he wants uh, because they're just going to get absolutely destroyed, but it does look like the roaches over here might actually be able to kill us off. Can he get it? Oh, it was so close. Will be able to kill off these SCVs at least, which is a big victory for him. Unfortunately, he can't kill that command center unless he reveals his Mutalisk, which might not be that bad of a choice. Do you have to remember, though, the Lings are at zero attack, while QXC already has 2-2. Two, two. And working on that, at least the three attack right now. There is going to be a drop over here. This will get cleaned up. It's just the Hellbats, 11 kills, 13 kills. They do so much damage. Almost all those Zerglings are going to end up dead if uh, if they engage anything else here. The Mutalisks are out, though. He is going to destroy this army. I feel like the Vikings not going to be able to hold their own whatsoever. The splash damage onto the units down below is going to quickly add up. And all of a sudden, these Mutalisks are going to have a hell of a fun time cleaning this up. Now, you got to remember that QXC does have more money back at home, um, but he needs to make Thors, which is exactly what he's doing here. He is going to end up losing these siege tanks, but the siege tanks, their DPS output is just absurd. Is going to be able to kill off one of the hatcheries here. Might be able to kill the gas geyser as well, but uh, even with no anti-air here, QXE is making this worth it by killing off one base. Don't think he's going to be lucky enough to get a second base here. Uh, he would be very, very lucky if he actually made that happen. I don't think it is going to happen here. I, he's not even focused on these units anymore, as the Mutas are going to be able to clean that up, and yep, indeed they do, but QXE, he's got a base here that is so dangerously close to the Zerg. I'm surprised to see him expand there as opposed to over here because look at how close this is. Look how close these bases are. You can see the Command Center and Creep on the same screen, which is a never, never a good sign when you are tearing. You gotta watch out for the Widow Mines though. Gonna be doing lots and lots of damage there. Two of the roads to get taken out. Here comes the Mutas right now. Zerglings have to be going on in, but Widow Mines gonna make short work of that. Here comes the Roaches as Kaiser really wants to clean this up. He needs to kill this off if possible. He's trying to find a sweet spot just to get a couple volleys of shots off. And there he goes. He's trying just to kill off the planetary. He does get it. Now he has to retreat right now. Watch out for the Widow Mines. Cannot afford to lose these Mutalists to any sort of Widow Mines. He's got to be so, so careful. The Widow Mines are growing, and the Thors are here. The Thors actually doing a lot of damage, but not as much as those Widow Mines would have done. Now, I don't know if Zerglings are the best choice. I think Muta Roach is going to be his best option here. Uh, uh, not Ultralist, though. Broodlords might be good as well. Um, a tech switch over to Broodlords would be a beautiful play. He does have the plus two attack on the way, though, for these Mutas, which uh, means he plans to stick with them at least for now. Now, this is kind of a dicey situation for both players. 
QXE just lost a base. He's not on five bases anymore. But our Zerg player, I mean, what unit composition do you use versus Siege Tank, Hellbat, Thor, Viking? It's very difficult to pull off. Might have to go for some Vipers. Might have to go for some Infestors. I don't know if just pure... Um, I, I, don't, I almost want to call them gateway units. Obviously, he's not Protoss, but I don't know if the basic Roach-type units, Roach Hydra, I don't know if it's going to work right now. He's going to have to pull out something fancy. He can't rely just on units that purely attack. Looks like that's exactly what he's going to try and do here, though. Sensor Towers still do stand. So he knows when and where the attacks are going to be coming from. But there is an army here in the center of the map. I'm not sure if our Zerg player Kaiser realized it. He's going to come in here, though. Might be able to take off another base. And the Roaches. This is so many Roaches. These Magic Boxes. Mutas here will find a sweet engagement to take out these Thors. And this is going to be an awesome, awesome victory here right now for Kaiser. He is very low on supply. Keep in mind, though, he does have a lot of money back at home. And he's doing so much damage here with this. As QXC definitely coming out the loser there. But, uh... Ooh, losing the uh, Overseer there means these Mutas have got to be very, very careful. The more Widow Mines you can set up in the game, the better. Two free Siege Tanks right here, but are they going to be free near the Widow Mines? Oh! Well, that was a pretty crazy split, actually, as uh, didn't wasn't able to split on that one. But he is going to be going down here, takes out the Sensor Tower, would love to kill off the Planetary or the Workers. There's finally going to be another drop over here, as we do have the Hellbats eventually going to get cleaned up, and uh, they do somehow kill the Queen off, which is pretty hilarious. The Mutalist count, though, is substantially lower than it used to be. So uh, looks like Kaiser going to be relying on the Roaches for now. He's got lots of upgrades. Big attack over here. These Hellbats just going to town, killing off so many drones. And these drones just are refusing to retreat. How is this guy not getting hit? That's what I want to know. There we go. They have to be very close to the Hellbat for the splash damage to work. It's basically a melee range. I think it's technically a range of two. Yeah, it's range two there. As uh, the Mutalist still, though, going to be aggressive and trying to harass. So far, this has been a brutal game. Both players, oh, Widow Mines, it's been nice knowing you Mutas. Oh, wait, they attacked the Roaches. Killing off the Roaches is not as big of a deal. With the two armor, they're able to survive. And uh, multiple shots there. So it does look like the Hellbat drops are continuing. This one's going to get cleaned up once again. I mean, this is still not looking great for QXC, but uh, he still has good production. Just does not have the income to back it. So it looks like he's going to be moving in right now to attack. Our Zerg player, though, doesn't actually have that much income either. So... Um, somehow QXC is in the lead, and we I think we all know what we can attribute that to. The six, uh, five to six mules that are on the field here. Yep, it's six. So six mules out at a time. We do have a Viper. Oh, loses the Viper right away. Now you cannot get Vipers without having anti-air. That's exactly why the, uh, the Vikings are going to be able to clean them up. Now getting out Vipers would be nice. I just don't know if he can go Corruptor, Roach, Viper. That might have to be exactly what he does because the Blinding Cloud is just huge versus these mech units. We'll get some nice splash damage from these Widow Mines right here. Um, a decent split there at the last second. He's going to go straight for the planetary. Can he get it? It looks like he will be able to. Just stop Mike running away, though. There he goes. Kills that off. He wants to kill the SMEs, but the reinforcing mech units are here. Lifts off this command center once again. And I got to say that QXE is uh, not having any luck getting getting any bases up. You can see his income is actually down to 100, which is basically zero at this point. I think that is only long distance mine. Does he even have any income, though? I feel like, yeah, he has it off this one mineral patch. So one mineral patch gives you about 100 minerals per minute. Looks like this orbital here could get taken out, but you can see that Kaiser forced to back up. If QXE does not win with this push, he will lose this game. We are going to be having a multi prong attack from all sides, though. Oh, the Mews are extending just a little bit. The Roach is going to get the surround here from the right side, from the left side. Can he clean this up? QXE has a lot of stuff going on here, and he might actually be able to kill these Roaches. The units are just melting away, and the Thors will be enough to kill off the Mews. Can QXE actually do this? He might be able to, albeit barely. Look at the units lost here. It has been tied up. QXC managing to hang on for now. Our Zerg player Kaiser has 3,000 minerals, but no gas. He's got to get more drones and gas over here. And the drop over here. It looks like QXC with the last rally of units might actually be able to make this happen. I thought for sure he was down and out. But this could be the comeback of the, we'll say the comeback of the week. I don't know when the when a bigger comeback has happened. But either way, this comeback is amazing right here. Can he actually do it? you got to remember, he has no income. Look at his income. It's at zero. This is all he's got. He can't even afford to repair his own units. Can QXC march into the main base and make this happen? Plus three attack is on the way for the Mutas. But the Hellbats over here are cleaning up all three of the other bases. Looks like the links here are not going to be enough to deal with that. And I got it. Oh, God. If he gets the drop over here, this is going to be devastating. Does QXC realize the opportunity? Yes, he does. He's got a drop over there. The drone's able to evacuate. The Roach is going to clean this up, but the main base is dead. And I don't know what he can actually make here to deal with this right now. A bad rally point. He was focused somewhere else. Uh, this might actually be a, a really bad. 
I mean, it, it is really bad right now here for Kaiser. I, my, my heart goes out to him here because all he has to do is deal with these last few units. There's hardly anything left. The Queen desperately trying to make it work, but the Link get taken out immediately. He's got to throw down tech somewhere else, but the drops are continuing over here as he does have the uh, the one, one Hellbat still inside, which can just cause massive amounts of terror. But uh, 97 supply to 106. My god, I think QXC is actually going to do this. Look at this. You can even kill off the uh, eggs there with the Thors. No more reinforcements out of there. I think he's doing that intentionally as well. So those units are not going to spawn. The Overlords here don't really matter at this point. What he needs to do is just deal with this one Hellbat. This Hellbat is the hero. What he's doing is preventing our Zerk player from ever recovering. And that is the MVP unit right there as he basically delayed three bases by himself, buying QXC enough time to clean out the main base of our Zerg player, and I don't really know what uh, what Kaiser can do at this point. He's got still a lot of money, and how many workers does he have in gas? Not nearly enough. God, what do you even do in this situation when there's such a cost-effective 3-2 army that you're going up against? Even with the roaches, um, I think he's going to have to get Burrow and Tunneling Claws, but he's not going to have enough time to do that. And now QXC is back up on his feet. He was beaten into a bloody pulp and was on the ground, down and out, but somehow with his last desperation push. This kind of reminds me of Bomber, where Bomber will do this in so many games where he's way behind, you think he's going to lose, you think he's down and out, and then he just attacks with everything and he wins. And you're like, uh, well, that wasn't supposed to happen. Widowmind is going to be joining up with this army as if Zerglings were not worthless enough at this stage. They are going to have one hell of a time dealing with those Widowmines. The Roach is trying to kill off a couple units. Will he be able to kill off anything here? It looks like this army is ready to go. Kaiser's got to back up though, running directly into the Meat Grinder Siege line. And you can see QXC playing so very patient right now. I got to say that a counterattack is really the only way to get around this for Kaiser. It is actually one Roach is doing just that. So the Roach taking the job of the Hellbat. I don't know where that MVP Hellbat ended up, but my God, was he a champion. I'm actually kind of curious as to where he is, if he's still alive or not. We'll have to go back and check in a little bit. But it looks like all the roads have been taken out, and Kaiser going to be losing it. There's GG. What an awesome game here by QXC. Able to take this game at the very last second. He had to attack with everything he had. He brought along SCVs. He brought along every single unit. And he basically caught Kaiser in an awkward position. And he still would have lost if, uh, if that Hellbat did not do the amount of harassment that it did. Um, so I'm kind of curious to see exactly where this Hellbat ends up. Uh, do, 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 do. There he goes right there. Actually, this, this guy has been going for a while. This was before the major attack. So we will keep an eye on him. Oh, wait, where'd he go? He'll, he'll be back. Don't you worry. So we got the attacks going on down the bottom right side. And I think we can actually... Well, here comes the big attack right here. I thought for sure that he had it. Army supply was uh, not that bad for Zerg, but not good enough to deal with that. All right, so here comes the Hellbats. One of these does end up dying. If I can keep up. Oh, come on, computer. Come on. Oh, God. When you're going on time date speed, man, it is so hard to follow it. All right, so there's that. And go ahead and slow it down. He is right here. Speed it up. We got to keep an eye on where this guy goes. Heals him up to full. He has 10 kills already. Drops him over here. And this brings him up to, what was that, like 14, something like that. And I want to keep an eye on this. Does he eventually end up losing? Yes, he does lose it there. But it's okay because he had already dealt the damage. If he did not kill all those drones, I think QXC still would have lost. So what an awesome play here, an awesome mech play by QXC. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.